Good morning, Jumpstart Nation. Praise God. I'm back in the state of Kentucky. I've almost forgotten where I live. So I think this is my house. I think, <laughs> I think this is where I live. So if uh, somebody runs me off, you'll know I got the wrong place. Praise God. Good morning, Shannon. How you doing? Praise God. Praise God. Jesus is Lord. Good morning, Nancy. Missed you yesterday. I know you're on the road, but praise God. I'm glad you're back. Good morning, Shonda. Good to see everybody. Praise God. I, uh, I'm going to try to do this outside. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Amen. I'm going to try to do this outside. We'll see what happens. Uh, the sun's kind of coming in bright, but I think I'll be okay. And so far, the bugs aren't shouting me down. So I don't have them shouting me down today. So we should be in pretty good shape, but we'll find out. Praise God. <laughs> Praise God. Oh, my goodness, man. I don't know if I've shared this with you. And eventually, hey, good morning, good morning, good morning. Hallelujah. Tammy. Hello, Tammy. I don't think we've met before. Good morning, Miss Hilda. Good morning, Tammy. Praise God. I'm sure Tammy's probably a wisdom, word wisdom warrior. Amen, I would say so. Good morning, Terry. Hallelujah. Good morning, Diane King. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Good morning, Pam. Good morning, Pam. Pam, I shared your testimony yesterday, how your, that nerve in your knee came back to life as the word was spoken. So we're just going to give a few, get, get a couple minutes here to get started. We Let's see what kind of a team God assembles today for us to wreak havoc in the realm of darkness. Let's just find out, man, as we're speaking the word in unity. You see, in the midst of disunity, and that's what's happened, in the middle of disunity, God has dropped a pearl of unity called Jumpstart Nation, a pearl of of unity called the Jumpstart Nation. Praise God. And we're speaking the word of life. We are speaking the word of God. Hallelujah. Uh, hey, Brother Dennis. How you doing, preacher? Good morning, Brother Ron. Praise God. I miss some of you. It's not because I don't love you. It's because I got a small phone and you pass by. Amen. Good morning, Brother Tony. Praise God. Ooh, we're getting... God's doing some serious team building today for Jumpstart Nation. We're going to be speaking the word. Listen, think about the power of this. Yeah, good morning. The power of what's happening with the social media is that we're literally speaking the word. I am here in Kentucky with several speaking the word. You're in your state, Oklahoma, Nebraska, um, uh, all over, all over, Ohio, all over, North Carolina, all over the place, um, West Virginia, all over the place, all right, Arizona, uh, speaking the word of God. What a difference that makes. Good morning, Chrissy. Hallelujah. Praise God. So good to see everybody getting on board. Thank you, Jesus. You know, I keep on saying to the Lord uh, in, my, in my heart, in my praying, okay, Lord, it's time for a new, you know, new subject. You know, we've been kind of focused on the love of God now. This is the end of, I think, the third week. And I just keep on getting more downloads from him. So we're just going to stay right with it. Good morning, Sister Stephanie. Praise God. God, Holy Ghost-filled woman of God. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Now, when we're speaking the Word of God, essentially we're praying, okay? And it's unified. We're unified praying. Amen. Hallelujah. Good to see you, Stephanie. Praise God. Now, it's unified praying. Now, I want you to, re I want you to, to, to hear what happens when Christians begin to speak in agreement with God. I want before we start jump starting the love of God, I want you to see what actually happens when we actually start speaking the word. Yay, Terry, Oklahoma, Oklahoma. Good morning to Oklahoma and Terry and Carlos. Praise God. Good morning, Elizabeth McDaniel. Hallelujah. Uh, Elizabeth's son in law and daughter just went skydiving. Can you believe that? Praise God. Amen. Wouldn't that have been awesome if that had happened? Uh, the rapture right before they hit the ground, boom, they go back up. That'd be like a bounce. That'd be awesome. <laughs> and here, here's what happens when pray. Here's what happens when believers pray. Acts chapter 12, Peter was in prison. 
Okay. Good morning, Karen. Good to see you. Good morning, Cynthia. Praise God. Amen. Okay, good, good. Amen. Got a, got a duo going there. God's putting, this is a powerful jumpstart team uh, today. God has assembled some powerful believers today. I, I'm just, it's always powerful. If you are just by yourself as a believer, it's powerful. Praise God. So here is what happens when we get in unity. Peter was in prison. This is Acts 12. Peter was in prison for preaching. Hello, somebody. Hello, somebody. Peter was in prison. Hey, Stephanie, for preaching the gospel. Listen, man, Holy Spirit, you snuck up on me on this one. You know, we're getting to the point, it's very possible within our generation or the generations of our children that, that uh, preaching could be illegal. I'm not believing that, and I'm not going to speak that anymore. But, but FYI, what do you do in a situation like in other nations, other countries, where it's illegal to preach? Notice this, and uh, it says that Peter was asleep, he was kept in prison, but notice Acts 12, 5, but Peter therefore was kept in prison, but, but, what? But prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him. I love that verse. Acts chapter 12, verse 5, Peter was kept in prison, but... Prayer, but prayer. What's prayer? Prayer is agreeing with God. When you're speaking the word, Jumpstart Nation, when we're speaking the word, we're praying together. We're praying in unity. We're speaking the word. We're praying. Well, no better thing to pray than the word of God. So really, when we're saying we're confessing the word, we're speaking the word, that's true, but we're praying. So Peter was kept in prison, but, but prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him. Now, let's break it down, then we'll jump start it. Peter was in prison. He was in trouble. But prayer, a specific activity, was made. See, if you make the prayer, you made the thing. When you make the prayer, see, we need to be making prayer. Prayer was made. We need to make the prayer. See, when Mary the mother of Jesus, when she made the prayer, she made the manifestation. Remember yesterday when the angel came and said, you're going to have a son. His name's going to be Jesus. She said, be it unto me according to your word. She put that in her mouth. She received that word. See, Jesus, I don't try, I'm not trying to repeat myself, but here we go. Jesus was first in Mary's ear. The angel spoke. Then Jesus was in Mary's mouth, be it unto me according to the word. The word was made flesh. When was it made flesh? When it got in her ear and got in her mouth. Man, 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 glory to God. When we can get God's word in your ear and in your mouth, praise God, that's when the word gets conceived. Now, when the word got in Mary's ear and got in her mouth, it was conceived in her womb. It got in her heart. It was conceived in her womb. When it was conceived in her womb, then it became manifested to the world. I'm telling you what. Good morning, Jackie. Notice that prayer was made, how? Without ceasing. They didn't quit. They stayed with it. They kept praying. They didn't pray to see if they prayed until. See, they didn't pray to see if God would set Peter free. They prayed until they stayed with it. Jumpstart Nation, we're on about session number 120-something. We've been jumpstarting every day, five days a week, uh, uh, without ceasing. And we're going to continue to agree with God and speak the word without ceasing. Praise God. So it was made without ceasing of the church, of the church, the assembly. So now this is who prayed. Prayer is what was happening, was made without ceasing. How long? Of the church tells you who, that matters. Who's the church? The church is the body of Christ. The church and Christ are one. We've been raised up together, made to sit together with Christ in heavenly places. So in the church, of the church, see, it even talks about who prayed. It matters. The effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man makes tremendous power available. So when we're praying as the church on Jumpstart Nation, it makes a difference unto God. Now we're talking about who they prayed to. We didn't pray to Obama. We didn't pray to Reagan. We didn't pray to Trump. We didn't pray to Biden. 
We didn't pray to um, Allah. We didn't pray to Buddha. They prayed to God. They prayed to God. They were talking to God. Listen, when we're jump-starting the Bible, the Word, we are speaking it not only into the environment, we're speaking it to God. He hears it. Glory to God. And then notice what happened. For Him, it tells you specifically who they were praying for. They weren't just praying generalities. They weren't just praying, you know, general, oh, God bless the world somehow. They were specifically praying for Peter. And so the very next thing that happens is uh, the angel comes, a light shines in the prison. The angel of the Lord came upon him, and a light shined in the prison. Number one, there was a divine presence. As they're praying, an angel is given the authority by the church's prayer to enter into Peter's situation. The angel shows up, and a light shined in the prison, a supernatural light light. Listen, as we're speaking the Word of God, as you pray on, the, on your own, your light is shining into the prison of those for whom you pray. It's shining into their prison. When you speak the Word concerning your loved ones, when you speak the Word, period, it's causing divine presence, angels to show up. It's also ca causing divine illumination to show up in people's prisons. Some of you are praying for loved ones. It's like they're in a prison. It's like they're bound. It's like they're locked into something. I'm telling you, number one, as you're praying to God for them, number one, angels are showing up. Number two, light, supernatural light is shining. Now, isn't that interesting? That's just like God who said, light be. Amen. And then, this is awesome, and then the angel smote Peter on the side and raised him up. Peter, the angel smote Peter on the side, woke him up from his sleep, and raised him up. As we are praying and speaking the word over, and you are, over loved ones, the presence of God is bringing even believers out of their sleep. It's, we're waking up sleeping believers. Angels are smoting people on the side, Awakening. I'm telling you, I'm seeing it happen. I saw it happen in church Sunday. Somebody came up to me. I saw it happen Sunday. The angel smote Peter and raised him up. As we pray to God for specific things, as we speak the word of God, divine beings are showing up in people's lives. Light is shining into the prison. Uh, the presence of God and angels are awakening people out of their sleep and raising, raising them up. Hallelujah. And then and he said, Arise up quickly. And his chains, oh, <laughs> whoo, <whew. laughs> I'm prophesying over somebody here. And his chains fell off from his hands. As we're speaking the word, as you're speaking the word over loved ones, the chains are falling off of their hands. Can you picture that? These chains that were on Peter's hands just fell. They just fell off. Listen, there is no bondage that you're in. There is no bondage that your loved ones are in that angels and the presence of God cannot just cause the chains to drop off their hands. Some of your loved ones' chains have been on their hands. They've been bound, demonically bound. I'm telling you, Angels and God's presence is showing up in their prison. The divine light of God is showing. I'm prophesying. Didn't even know I was going there today. I didn't even know this was in Acts 12, guys. Listen, Jumpstart Nation. This is what happens when we get on Jumpstart. Number two, light, divine light is, is shining into the prisons of loved ones as you speak the word for them, as you talk the word. Number three, uh, the, the angels and presence of God are smoting them on their side and waking them up from their spiritual coma. They're, ra they're being raised up to sit. They're, they're recognizing their position in Christ. The chains are falling off of their feet. And then the angel said unto him, Gird yourself and bind on your sandals. And so he did. And he said unto him, Cast your garment about you and follow me. Listen to what the angel said. Gird yourself. I'm telling you what these loved ones we're praying for are being divinely instructed 
to put on the armor of righteousness. They're not going to run around spiritually naked anymore as we're praying and speaking the word of God. They're going to gird themselves with the gospel belt of truth. They're going to put on the gospel sandals of authority. The good news, the gospel of peace is being put on their shoes. See, slaves wore sandals. Slaves wore sandals. But the angels of God, the presence of God as we're praying, as we're praying, that God is supernaturally directing loved ones and people you're speaking the word over to put their sandals on and to act like they're a son and daughter and not a slave or a prisoner. He said, guard yourself, put on your sandals. And then he said, cast your garment about you. Wear that anointing, put on that robe of righteousness, wear your righteousness and act like you're righteous. Stop acting like you're a prisoner with no sandals, with no belt of truth and with no righteousness. There are believers right now as we're speaking the word of God, jumpstart nation. There are people right now as we're in unity, this team is in unity as we're speaking the word of God. There are believers who are coming out of their coma, coming out of their prison, coming out of their, their shoeless slavery, coming out of their truthless, beltless living. Their pants are not going to fall down around them anymore. They're putting on the garment of righteousness and they're going to walk like they're the righteousness of God in Christ. Praise God. Glory to God. Say this out loud. As I speak the word of God, as I speak the word of God over myself, as I pray and speak the word of God over loved ones, I will continue to do so without ceasing. Unto God. For them. Hallelujah. And my loved ones. And fellow believers in America. Are experiencing divine presence in their prisons. Say it. They are experiencing divine illumination in their prisons. They are being smote by the presence of God and awakened. They are rising up quickly and their chains are falling off their hands. We're jumpstarting Acts 12, by the way. As we continue to pray and speak the word, They are girding their self with the belt of truth. They are putting on their sandals of sonship. And they are casting the garment of righteousness around them. They're walking in the revelation of righteousness. Glory to God. Remember the prodigal son? <laughs> When he came home out of his pig pen, when he came home, the father ran to him. He did not run to the father. The father, listen, the father's running toward you faster than you're running toward him. Don't you forget it. The father always runs toward you faster than you can run toward him. That father was waiting for that son. He had been watching because it says he saw him a long way off. That father in that prodigal son story in Luke 15 had been watching for that son to come home every day. The father is watching over those you love that have gone astray. The father's watching over you even when you've gone astray. He's watching for you. He's watching. And when he saw the son, it says the father girded up his loins. He pulled up his robe. The father pulled up his robe so he could run, and the father ran to the son faster than the son ran to the father. He embraced that son. He kissed that son. That's what's happening to you and your loved ones in Jesus' name. And then the first thing he said, he said, kill the fatted calf. He put a ring on his finger. He put a robe around him, and he put sandals on his feet. What are sandals? The revelation of the gospel of peace, that God's not mad at you the revelation of the good news. Sandals also represent authority. Slaves are barefooted. Your, your loved ones, you and I, as we're speaking the word of God, as we're praying without ceasing, we are wearing the sandals of sonship, the sandals of authority. Hallelujah. 
And then he said, he said, he said, cast your garment about you and follow me and follow me. You see, when you get back to your understanding of righteousness, when we cast the garment of righteousness about us, when we wear that anointing of righteousness, we then begin to have supernatural discernment to follow the plan of God. He said, put your garment on you and follow me as we're speaking the word of God and we're becoming strong in the revelation of righteousness. We're now being supernaturally led by the spirit of God and even by angels. They're leading you every day. They're leading you and your loved ones out of harm's way. They're leading you out of the way of darkness. He's leading you in paths of righteousness. Say this out loud. I am being supernaturally led and guided. Say this, I'm led by the Spirit. My loved ones are led by the Holy Spirit. I'm led by angels when necessary. Now, we don't ever put the leading of angels above the leading of the Holy Spirit or the Word of God because there are angels that can pretend that they're angels of light and they're not. They're angels of deception. So we always keep any leading in line with the Word. I don't care if an angel shows up to you and says, I'm sent from God and glows in the dark. That doesn't mean it's from God. If they mislead you according to the Word, it was an angel of light but not from the realm of light. Amen. But we're led supernaturally. In verse 9, and it said, He went out, he went out and followed him and did not, and uh, did, wist not that it was true which was done by the angel, but thought he saw a vision. Peter went out, he got out of the prison. What happened? That angel opened that prison door. That angel, as the church prayed, God supernaturally opened a locked prison door. And he went out as we're praying the word of God, as we're speaking the word of God. Uh, believers all over America, your loved ones are going out. Their prison doors being opened. They're going out and they're even going to be shocked because it said he did not know that it was true what was done by the angel. The power of God, the goodness of God as we're speaking the word, as we're praying the word of God is so phenomenal and is producing such powerful results even in loved ones that you have that have been bound for years, years, you hear me, years. They are being set free because of your speaking the word of God. They're being set free and they're coming out of their bondage and looking around wondering, what happened? How did I get here? What happened? How did I get here? They are going, it's going to be a wonder. See, when it makes somebody wonder, it's a sign and a wonder. Say this out loud as we speak the word of God. As we pray the word of God without ceasing. Loved ones. Believers in America. Are coming out of their prison. And are even shocked and in wonderment. They'll even think they're dreaming. In fact, I'm prophesying this ahead of time. You're going to have somebody say, this is like a dream. I never dreamed that I would be free from this. I never dreamed that God would give me this. I never dreamed this would happen to me. You're going to hear that. Some of you are going to hear people say, I never dreamed. I couldn't imagine this would ever happen to me. Wow, that's amazing. Praise God. Now, and it says, but he thought he saw a vision. Now, when they were past the first and the second ward, they came into the iron gate that leads into the city, which opened to them of its own accord. They came to the iron gate. They got past the first and second ward. God's not only setting people free from the inner prison, he's totally setting them free, not just sort of setting them free. He's going to set them past the first guard. He's going to set get them past the second guard, the, the secondary demons that had them bound, the second and third level of demons that had them bound. Amen. The whole ring. And he got to the, to, the, to the gate which leads to the city, and the gate opened by it itself. Why? Why did that gate open? Because the church was praying to God without ceasing for Peter. Do you hear me, Jumpstart Nation? As we're speaking the word of God, supernatural doors are opening and getting people out of the city of their bondage, out of the city of their captivity. Ha, 
Ha, ha, ha. Say this out loud. Say this out loud. This is Colossians 1.13. God has delivered me. God has delivered my loved ones from the power of darkness. Now, the Amplified says that the word delivered means also drawn to himself. God has delivered and drawn us to himself. Say this out loud. God has delivered me and my loved ones out of the power and authority of darkness and has translated me. I can't see the screen because it's so bright out here. So amen to whatever you're saying. <laughs> and has delivered us from the power and authority of darkness and drawn us to himself. He's translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. God is supernaturally opening doors. Say it. He's opening the gates and setting us free and setting my loved ones free. Say this out loud. Believers all over America are being supernaturally liberated by the Word of God. Whew. I'm telling you, man, this is awesome. Then it said, it opened of its own accord and they went out and passed on through one street and forthwith the angel departed from him. And when Peter was come to himself, he said, Now I know for sure that the Lord sent his angel and has delivered me out of the hand of Herod. He delivered me out of the hand of governmental leaders because the church was praying. Because the church was praying without ceasing for Peter to God. Woo, glory. Who has greater authority? Herod or the church that prays and speaks the word? Do you understand what Jumpstart Nation is? It's more authority than the President of the United States. What we're doing, speaking and praying the Word, has more authority than the Herods of our land, than the governors of your state, than the mayors of your city, than the superintendents of your school. My God, I feel the anointing all over this. I didn't know this was in Acts 12. Jumpstart nation, God is just dropping a bomb in us today. This is phenomenal. Now notice, when Peter was come to himself, those for whom we're speaking the word, as we're speaking the word of God, people are coming to themselves. They're coming to their senses. We're coming to our senses. Hallelujah. Uh, uh, believers all over America are coming to their senses. Peter came to himself. Glory to God. The miracle already happened. This miracle happened without Peter even realizing what was going on. Man, he was asleep, dude. He, it's amazing. And he, and he said, now I know of a surety that the Lord has sent his angel. Here's the next thing that's going to happen. When they come to themselves, they're then going to know for sure God has supernaturally moved in their lives. They're no longer going to wonder, is God good? They're no longer going to wonder about God. They're going to know of a surety that God is God. You've been trying to pray for people that have been deaf, dumb, and blind spiritually. People in your family, deaf, dumb, and blind spiritually. I mean believers. Believers in your church. Believers in this nation. They are coming to know for a surety that God is real. And that God is moving mightily in the earth and in this nation. Hallelujah. Say this out loud. They're coming to themselves. They are awakening to reality. They are knowing for sure that the Lord is real. They are knowing for sure that God has delivered them out of the hand of human authorities. Hallelujah. It said the, the Lord has delivered him out of the hand of Herod and from all the expectation of the people of the Jews. And then verse 12, And when he had considered the thing, he came to the house of Mary, the mother of John. He came to the house of Mary, the mother of John, whose surname was Mark. Mark, who wrote the gospel. Where many were gathered. See, we got 18. Many were gathered together praying. Hey, many's a lot. That's cool. And there's others that's going to speak this later on today. Many were gathered together praying. 
What caused all this to happen? People were gathered together, praying. Start gathering people around these jump starts and start speaking the word. Gather people in your church and pray. Pray specifically. Praise God. Pray the word. It says, as Peter knocked at the door of the gate, a young lady came to answer. Her name was Rhoda. And when she knew Peter's voice, she opened not the gate because of joy and ran in and told how Peter stood before the gate. And they said to her, you're crazy. But she constantly affirmed that it was so. Then they said, well, it's his angel. They believed it was his angel more than him. In other words, these people were praying for Peter And God so powerfully answered their prayer that it was beyond what they could ask or even think. God answered their prayer beyond what they could even think. As we're speaking the word of God, God is doing things. As we're speaking the word of God, God is doing things that is blowing your mind. They couldn't even believe that their prayer was answered. Glory to God. It was beyond what they could ask or think. But Peter continued knocking, and when they had opened the door and saw him, they were astonished. Here they are praying. So see, it wasn't about that they had this massive faith. Hallelujah. No, man, they were astonished. Listen, God is so much bigger than your prayers. God is so much bigger than your faith. It's not big faith. It's a big God. They weren't big believers. I mean, they were shocked that God answered their prayers. I'm telling you, as you're speaking the word of God, jumpstart nation, God is going way beyond what you could ask or think according to the power that's working in you. He's overthrowing wicked rulers. He's foiling their plan. He's destroying the plots of the Herods of the earth, of the, of the whoever's of the earth. I'm telling you, we are large and in charge. And as we're speaking the word of God, even we are being astonished at what God is doing through the word, his word in our mouth. Say this out loud. God's word in our mouth is so far beyond our thinking that its results are astonishing. Say this. God's words in our mouth is creating signs and wonders that even makes us wonder and be shocked. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. So it says, But he beckoning unto them with the hand to hold their peace, declared unto them how the Lord had brought him out of the prison. And he said, Go show these things to James and to the brethren. And he departed and went unto another place. Some of these people that we're praying for, they're going to come, they're going to testify. You're going to hear their testimony. They're going to testify to what God has done. They're going to begin to declare that Jesus is Lord. They're going to begin to declare the miracles and the signs and the wonders and the deliverances. But don't hold on to them. Some of them will stay in your assembly around you and other they'll be sent. They'll go to another place. In other words, they'll get on track and they'll get on their mission, but don't cling to them. Don't hold them tight. They have to go. They're coming. They'll report. They'll testify, but many will go, and they'll finally do what God's called them to do. Hallelujah. Praise God. Wow, man. Whoa. Wow. What just happened? What just happened? Say this out loud. We're going to continue to make prayer to speak the word without ceasing as the church of God unto God for ourselves and for others. Say it again. Let's repeat it again. As the church seated with Christ, we will continue To make prayer, (laughs) to make confessions without ceasing unto God for others and signs and wonders are following and captives are being set free. This church kept praying 
and that prayer meeting in Mary's house, John Mark's house, what a miracle it produced. Can you imagine the next day when Peter got up to preach? Oh my goodness, I'm telling you, God is rocking our world through the words of our mouth. Now, if God could sovereignly do it without us praying, why did they pray? Our praying is our partnering with God and God is partnering with us. And I'm telling you, even the Herods and the governors and the presidents and the rulers and the leaders cannot stop the jump start nation. Hey guys, make sure you share this. Glory to God. That wasn't at all what I planned on doing, but amen. It's good. Anyhow, get the word out, get the word out, get the word out, help share. Love you all. Rhea is going to be on at 10, I believe. She's still up in Dayton doing some house um, remodeling. But um, anyway, love you. Have a blessed day.